So what are you doing now? Like, what is your business model now, like today? So today we, it's kind of like two tiered model. So we have uh, one concept where I'm, where I'm sitting right now in our dining room, which is a, um, it's a craft beer, like pizza concept yeah. slash NFT gallery. Um, so we, the, the space kind of doubles as um, a community space where we can showcase artists and have events like that. And we display a bunch of NFTs like um, in the restaurant. And then the second part of our concept is like smaller uh, footprint slice houses or slice shops. Yeah. Um, and we have one of those uh, on Divisadero. And then we have one that that works as a stand at one of the farmer's markets here in San Francisco. So those are just kind of small square footage places where you can just people can just pop in and grab some slices or a whole pie and go. Yeah, exactly. Now you said NFT, like I know what that is, but explain to someone who's listening because I'm our <laughs> listeners are pizza operators and I, <laughs> I would be willing to bet that 90 to 95% of them don't know what an NFT is. Yeah. So they're, they're basically way overpriced JPEGs. <laughs> That's a great way to say it. It's true. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the first iteration of, uh, I guess, the value of blockchain technology where you can create, you can tokenize uh, an image or a piece of artwork that makes it one of a kind. And then that creates like kind of like game dynamics and um ultimately ultimately fomo is is really what like drives yeah. the demand with these things but um there's a lot of cool artists that are that have been in the space and originated kind of like in digital art um and then there's just all the other art artists that are trying to cross over everyone from you know athletes to musicians to fine artists or uh it, it gives a platform also for like people who were creating images like in their day jobs like through graphic work or working on video games and stuff like that and like gives a a, a a platform for them but basically creates you know tokenizes one of a kind piece of uh artwork or some kind of artwork slash collectible and um people get really excited about it. it's kind of like baseball cards but yeah but but more appealing uh to the general public yeah, it's hard to kind of yeah. describe to someone who's not. It takes a while for you to actually understand what it actually is. I actually heard somebody describe an NFT like this. They said, imagine you, you, Steve Jobs writes an email, like the first email ever created on the internet he wrote, right? Like you could get yeah. a copy of that, like you said, a JPEG. Anybody could copy it and have the JPEG. What if you actually own the actual file of that actual email? Like that would be pretty valuable and you couldn't like showcase it on a wall but you would have access to that email that steve jobs wrote and it would be certified that he wrote it from this server at this time yeah like, that's kind of like what these these jpegs are they're digital artwork that you own that could be um purchased and minted right yep minted purchased traded given away whatever but what makes it unique is that like it has that it has those numbers associated with it that identify it as like the authentic one right it's like and it's it's nearly impervious to to fraud right so right how did you uh, get in how did you get it started with nfts like how did you get into that or the gallery itself um well we were we well we're in san francisco first of all so we're like surrounded with with you know all the gossip and rumblings around the <laughs> technologies and stuff. Right. So we f at first started out kind of like dabbling in crypto, um, and then that kind of like down the rabbit hole led us to NFTs. But just trying to wrap our head around like what uh, blockchain technology means and like what that will be um, for for us as a render as, as a restaurant industry, but just the world at large, I think it's like a technology that's that hasn't really been leveraged yet. Um, but once people kind of like wake up to like what it's what's possible, um, trying to imagine what those possibilities are is is how we discovered NFTs. And then my younger brother, Dave, is uh, a music producer and he um, he's been digging in crates like since he was like 12 years old. And there's and he's been also like uh peripherally 
involved in the art world and and he's he's a creative and so on and so forth and like it just happened to like dovetail perfectly with like uh the nft art world and he he's like a he's like a wizard man just like he can just like flip through nfts and tell like <laughs> quality and like uh authenticity and like you know like what era of art that is or what type of art that is and um so like me and him just kind of having these long conversations and, and and messing around with it and then my my third brother dan um he's he's kind of like the money guy he, he works at facebook and and he started kind of uh funding our collection if you will yeah and um the timing was just right like we were we were we were probably a little bit too conservative because it's scary when you're spending like thirty thousand dollars on a jpeg um <laughs> but also we were like if you look at it in a certain way we were also like right on time because we were able to to capture a lot of like really great um historic pieces and, and stuff like that so, how long did you say you were like right on time when did you start this uh i think i think october a year ago i think so you were pretty early like people listening to this in october of 2021 and they're still not even sure what that stuff is yeah i mean like it's it's definitely exploded in popularity but it's still not like there's not mainstream um adoption i mean even with crypto it's just it, like you know it's hard to do that like step of setting up your wallet and, yeah it's not easy to transact yeah. and, right yeah and do you but accept, it'll get there yeah do you, i totally agree do you accept yeah. cryptocurrency for like your orders and stuff uh we're we're not like at a high transaction volume but we're we're in line or in queue with a uh crypto like pos uh interface yeah like when when that comes out like we'll be one of the uh test phase people um but we do take crypto from people if, if they want to pay with crypto i gladly I, I would gladly take payment in ether or bitcoin first yeah i mean i know everybody every pizza shop <laughs> should because it's like you pay with a dollar a year from now that dollar is going to be less than valued than what it is but if you pay with bitcoin i mean the way it's been going and who i mean it's not guaranteed to go up but if you look at the last yeah. trend for the last five to seven years it's trending up every single year do you know oh absolutely you know, so did you hear the story of the person who bought the first two pizzas from papa john's how much they paid yeah it's a i don't remember the number off the top of my head but it's an astronomical amount of yeah uh, Ten thousand bitcoin yeah. in 2010 he paid ten thousand bitcoin for two papa john's pizzas to get delivered yeah but back then it wasn't it was worth like what but not a lot because yeah it was like, like nothing 20 but 25 bucks or something it's five it's worth 500 million dollars now yeah imagine that Dang. how much would you be yeah. kicking yourself if you bought two pizzas for ten thousand bitcoin back in 2010 oh, you God. could literally be retired <laughs> i mean retired you could buy you yeah, have to work right. ever that's crazy yeah. that's crazy